For both current and aspiring professional musicians, it goes without saying that we have made mistakes during our past performances and will almost certainly make mistakes during our future performances. Mistakes exist on a spectrum that ranges from something trivial, like playing a few wrong notes that barely anybody would notice, to a catastrophic mistake that would completely derail your performance. So as musicians integrated into a competitive industry and society, how do we cope with the mistakes that we've made during our past performances, be they trivial or catastrophic? To approach an answer to that primary question, I will pose two secondary questions. Number one, how can mistakes impact our performances? And number two, how should they impact our performances? I have thought about these two questions a lot during my academic career and I've come to understand mistakes as existing in two categories. As a disclaimer, this form of analysis is something that I have developed from my personal experience. So you can take it, leave it, or add to it by sharing your thoughts in the comments section. So the first category of mistake is mistakes that only the performer is aware of. So obviously, mistakes that you notice as a performer will encompass pretty much any and all mistakes on the spectrum that I mentioned earlier. This is because as a performer, you will almost always know the piece better than anybody in the audience, or at least you should. And because you know the piece well, you will know what should and shouldn't be in your playing. Of course, there are some caveats to this. For example, if you're a complete beginner, you may overlook many mistakes because you're still developing a framework for identifying issues in your playing. So to summarize the first category, mistakes that the performer will notice will encompass all mistakes on this spectrum, even the most minute ones. Moving on to the second category, we have mistakes that the audience is aware of. This category is more dynamic than the previous one because whether or not the audience is aware of any blunders you make during your performance depends on several factors. One being the familiarity of the piece. If it's a piece that everybody is familiar with, then more people will notice when something is off. Another factor is the audience demographic. For example, if you're performing to a group of experienced musicians, that would be a demographic that is more likely to notice any issues in your playing. Another factor that influences the audience's awareness of your mistakes is severity. In this case, the severity of the mistake. I'll address this towards the end of the video. For now, let's get to our secondary questions since we've established an analytical framework. So, how can mistakes impact performance? The short answer to this is body language. We can think of body language as a canvas that reflects our inner state of mind, and mistakes profoundly impact this canvas, be they minor slip-ups or more significant errors. One of the most telling aspects of our body language is our facial expressions. It's like a split-second reveal of our thoughts, a window into our self-awareness. A slight stumble might trigger a subtle grimace, while a more significant error could elicit a more pronounced expression of concern or even embarrassment. So what does body language have to do with our category of mistakes? Well, these expressions, especially the negative ones, can make a minuscule mistake that only you are aware of and turn it into a mistake that the audience is aware of. And as a result, the audience might get the impression that a slight stumble is a bigger deal than it should be. And now, we've wandered into the territory of our next question. How should mistakes impact a performance? The short answer is that mistakes should not not impact our performance at all really. But the reality involves a much longer nuanced answer. The reality is, is that mistakes will impact both how we feel and think during and after a performance. But the mistakes should not impact the performance itself. Or at the very least, you should not add to that impact by reacting to the mistake. In my opinion, it's just really not the time or place to display any critical feelings you have about your playing. If you are feeling unsatisfied with your performance in that moment, fine. But do your best not to put that on display. I have a pretty strong feeling feeling about this because the way I see it is this. The only thing worse than you feeling unsatisfied with your performance is the audience feeling unsatisfied with your performance because they can tell you're unsatisfied. I believe that's an outcome we should try to avoid. To wrap up this video, let's return to our opening question and try to answer it with some actionable advice. So again, how do we cope with mistakes we've made during a past performance, be they trivial or catastrophic? Number one, work on controlling your body language when performing. Every aspect of your persona on stage gives the audience clues about your mind state. So be thoughtful about your posture and facial expressions. You can practice this and improve over time by recording your performances. This will allow you to see things from the audience's perspective. Once you have your footage, review it and ask yourself some questions. For example, how did I come across as I walked on stage? What impression did I give when I left the stage? Did I smile? Did I unintentionally make a strange face? Did my body language communicate a feeling of confidence? How did I handle any mishaps? Did I recover well? Did I overreact? 
things like that. The next step is to write down any observations you make about your playing and begin applying those observations in the practice room. For example, if you have a habit of wincing when you play a wrong note, practice being mindful of your facial expressions. Be sure to do this even if you feel like you made a big mistake. Just keep your cool and shift your focus back to the music. If you find your mind wandering while practicing, this could lead to a loss of focus, which would then lead to a memory slip. To prevent this, focus on singing the music in your mind's ear as you play. This technique will connect you both to the music and the present moment. And if something still goes wrong, this will help you recover much more quickly. My last piece of advice is to continually audit your practice technique. Suppose you find yourself repeatedly missing notes throughout several of your performances. In this case, the solution will likely involve revisiting the way in which you prepare. For example, don't allow yourself to miss any notes while you're in the practice room. If you strictly follow this rule, you'll realize you need to practice much lower than you think you should, especially if you're starting a new piece. Look, it's cliche advice, but it's cliche for a reason. If you're missing notes at the current tempo, go even slower. If you allow yourself to frequently miss notes in the practice room, you're teaching your mind to develop a muscle memory for wrong notes. So when you start your next piece, go section by section and play at a tempo that allows you to achieve 100% accuracy. Do this at least five times before moving on to the next section or increasing the tempo. Alright, I'm done yapping, so thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike the video. And if you have any comments, let me know.